Hello and welcome to the last express video relating to ACCA paper F7. We will actually be discussing the statement of cash flows, which is the um, primary statement of financial position, which will actually reflect only the cash generating capability of the company. The um, cash flows will be presented um, based on three categories, operating, financing and investing activities. Cash um, under IS7 is actually cash and bank deposits along with cash equivalents which are defined as short-term, highly liquid investment that are readily convertible into known amounts of cash, which are subject to insignificant risk of changes in value. Short-term, it would be typically three months. And the classical example of this will be a treasury bill, or actually treasury bills. There are two ways in which um, a statement of cash flow can be presented, either using direct or the indirect method. The standard recommends the direct method, but probably the most widely used in practice is the indirect method. Um, this one is more frequent and more examinable one, and all you need to know the indirect one is the pro forma. The direct method will actually be presenting the cash flows from operating activities as cash coming in from the customers, cash received from customers, cash paid to suppliers and employees other cash payments, that is our, our operating cash flows. For an indirect method, the way in which we actually present the operating cash flow is we start with the operating profit and we reconcile everything down to the cash movements, meaning every income gain and expense that has nothing to do or has no associated cash movement will be disregarded from this reconciliation. So, classical examples would be, we start with profit before tax and we add back the finance cost and finance income because most likely this one will be charged into the income statement based on accrual basis and we are left with the profit before interest and tax. In arriving at this profit, we actually have booked in the account some transaction which are non-cash. Classical examples would include depreciation, amortization of intangibles, any impairment losses, any gains and losses on disposal of non-current assets or revaluation of investment property. If we add them up, we actually will come up with the operating profit or loss before working capital changes. And now we have to take into consideration the increase or the increase in inventories, receivables and payables. So an increase in inventory, it will be a cash outflow. We actually invested the money in our inventories a increase in trade receivables will still be a cash outflows. The customers are paying us a little bit later and an increase, for instance, in trade payables is a cash inflow. Then add them up, everything together, we come up with cash generated from operations. We will have to show the actual interest and tax paid and that would be net operating cash flows. This figure, whether presented in the indirect method or presented using the direct method, should be one and the same. The rest of the cash flows derived either from investing or financing activities 
will be reflected in the same way under direct or indirect method. Payments to acquire non-current assets will be reflected in investing cash flows. Proceeds from sales of non-current assets will also be reflected in cash flows. Financing cash flows will include money coming in from the issue of shares and look for in the exam a share premium account because in most of the exam scenarios the shares are issued at more than the nominal value. Dividend which is actually paid to our shareholders and that can be shown as an operating activity also. New loans which were raised during the accounting period or repayment or the lo of the loans and some government grants either received or paid. Net cash flows from financing activity and if we add them up all three together, we will come up with the net increase or decrease in the cash and cash equivalents during the accounting period and that one can be easily reconciled with the cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the period and the cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period. Irrespective of which method you will be asked to use in the exam, most likely will be the indirect method. How you will be tested, it will be, you will be presented with an income statement. You will have a statement of financial position for two consecutive years. All you have to do is to remember the pro forma and plug in the figures which appear in this reconciliation. Therefore, it's pretty important to understand uh, that in order to derive the cash operating profits or the cash flows, you will have to deduct, for instance, depreciation, and that is your accounting profit before tax. In short, any adjustments which decreases the net assets should be added back, meaning any expense or loss. Any adjustments which increases the net assets will be deducted, that is an income or a gain. Since we start with profit before tax and profit is the difference between income or revenues and expenses, that's profit before interest and tax, let's say. Any adjustments for expenses or incomes which are not cash, it will be a decrease or an addition to the profit, an increase in net assets or deduction for profit before tax. The approach in the exam, read the full question. It will be a lengthier one, but you'll be lucky to actually see this in the exam. The global pass rates actually go up when a cash flow question appears in the exam. Read it in full. There will be an income statement, statement of financial position, as I said, for two years, and then some information with respect to, I don't know, depreciation, acquisition, disposal of non-current assets. Then produce the pro forma and plug in the easy figures, like profit before tax, opening and closing balance at the, for cash and cash equivalents at the bottom, because they will earn you the easy marks, as I call it in the exam. The workout through the reconciliation section in the statement, and once we actually finish off the reconciliation of profit before tax down to operating profit, then we'll move to the statement of financial position and we'll look for uh, the movements in working capital like inventory, trade receivables, trade payables. We will try to derive the cash flows from investing and financing activities by looking at the opening and closing balances for items like share capital and share premium, current and non-current liabilities, property, plant and equipment. Sometimes in order to derive the cash, we will have to open a T account, plug in all the information which we know, like for instance, opening balance and closing balance for property, plant and equipment, depreciation charge during the accounting period, any acquisition under a finance list, and the difference will be the acquisition 
for cash. That will always be a balancing item. And then do a reasonable check at the end to see that the figures make sense. And if the opening and closing balance for cash and cash equivalents plus minus the cash used or cash inflow during the accounting period, if they reconcile, you actually will gain almost the full marks in the exam. If not, and you do not have time to actually find for the missing figure, move on to the next question in the exam.